Welcome to the Kingdom Living Podcast with Glenn Reppel. I'm Carrie Fink. Boy, it's going to be another great buckle your seat uh, time of biblical teaching. How are you today, Glenn? Hey, really good, Carrie. Uh, and it's exciting um, and just so thankful to the people tuning in and, and liking the programs and 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 just uh, the impact. Because, uh, Carrie, as I've said before, I get more out of this than anybody because of just the preparation, getting to the Word of God, uh, hearing from the Lord. Uh, and the Holy Spirit just speaking this out. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, listeners and those that are viewed uh, each, each, each week. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it's so exciting, actually, to see the audience for these growing worldwide. It's, it's, uh, it really is a labor of love. And, uh, you know, it's just so important to be studying what God's word has to say about things. That's how you really appropriate kingdom living. And Glenn, you know, more and more people are subscribing to the REPL uh, to the REPL Minute, which is the uh, YouTube channel where all the Kingdom Living and all the REPL Minutes are housed, and people are liking the Facebook page and all that. And we always encourage people to share this message if it has meaning for you. Just share it. And you know, last week's message, "What is the Truth," is already on its way to setting another record in terms of YouTube views and things like that. And and really exciting to see people being set free. Uh, and able to, uh, as you often say in your financial services business, you call it uh, reach your purpose as an objective when you help uh, uh, families and individuals work through their financial things. But we say really the same thing in the uh, in the REPL Minute world, in the Kingdom Living world. This is all about helping you reach your purpose. And when you shared the title of today's uh, message, it, something just went off in my spirit about this is really going to be important because people understand prosperity to mean money uh, as, as one definition. But what, what we're really talking about when you think about it, Glenn, is all the things, all those kingdom living benefits that we talk about when you take the time to explore God's word and what he has to say about kingdom living. You know, Carrie, it, at some point, and, and as, as many teachings that we've done, uh, it's kind of like they all kind of, from Genesis to Revelation, they all just come together about who we are, our identity, and and how much God loves mankind. Yes. And, and uh, oh, it's just to bring that truth out there and to see people respond is so important. Uh, we sometimes get beat up that we're not good enough and, and have to try harder and so forth. But God laid it all on the line. He loves us. He accepts us. And, and boy, we can get that. That's exciting. Good, good news. And, and the idea that, you know, we have to wait for some event into the future. We have to die to have something happen before God. No, he came. He loves us now. He came to earth to live inside, inside of us. And again, today we're going to be talking about all things, all things. So so we're, we're going to be talking about it. So that'd be really, really, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's exciting. And Glenn, as we always say, you know, as you go through these messages, this is literally podcast 146. They're all available to you at the repelminute.com. They're all available to you on the uh, YouTube channel, the Repel Minute. They're all available on the Facebook page and all of those different locations. But the main thing is take a hold of these because that really will make a difference for you. And as we always say, Glenn, it's not really there's no opinion in here. We are just, you you know, as you go through these teachings and people will get this, they, they will see you just reading scripture after scripture, which really supports the definition of how God sees us. And kind of with that, Glenn, let's dive right into today's teaching. Yeah. And, and that just fits with the disclosure that we, we like to go through each, each, each time. And, and this is in Galatians 1 verses uh, 11 and 12 in the Passion Translation. And this is Paul speaking. And this is, this is, the way he viewed, uh, the way he learned is, beloved ones, let me repeat emphatically that the gospel that's been entrusted to me was not given to me by any hand, by any man. No one taught me this revelation, for it was given to me directly by the unveiling of Jesus Christ. So it's really important, too, that, you, that, that, that people listening and watching, how did you learn this? Where you're at today, how did you learn what you've learned about who God is, who Jesus is, who you are? Uh, uh, and, and again, it's so important because if we learned it from man uh, without the revelation of the Holy Spirit, then it's been taught. And, and there's a good chance it may have been generationally taught to you through the family, too. Uh, and, and certain things that have happened that that drill in, oh, oh, that's because, you know, you're, you're not a very good person. That's that God's punishing you. The words that have been spoken over us, that God loves us. 
And we need to understand that. And you're a sinner. No, he loves us and he redeemed us. So it's really important that we grasp some of these things. So who taught you uh, the things that you know right now? And that's a great question. Just to ask, who taught you these things? And so here's some questions that we like uh, asking and, and, uh, and getting answers to uh, is, is questions you need to ask. And again, get your pens, your pencils out uh, and just paper and, and just just write uh, write down some, take notes today. Uh, and, and again, re-listen re to uh, these teachings because many times you'll need to look up some of the scriptures, uh, look at various translations uh, and, and just ask questions. Is that really true? Is that right? You know, I didn't, I didn't know that uh, could, because one of the things in the book fraud uh, is is that that that, that we've written and, and again is is th these are forty uh, different bite sized chapters but it's about the lies that we believe about ourselves uh, and the fraud that's been committed against us but here's some questions that just need answers who are you where are you from what's your purpose for being here what defines you when it is neat what defines you death or life <laughs> great question when did time start when does time end does it end was Adam supposed to die? If Adam had not eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, would he still be living today? Are you, or are we, are we supposed to die? What did Jesus redeem? That's a great question. What did Jesus redeem? When did decay, sickness, and death begin? Has sin, sickness, and death been defeated? I, I like this one too. Have you died already? Have you died already? Have you been resurrected already? Has Satan been defeated? Did Jesus accomplish his death and resurrection? Do you, uh, what did Jesus accomplish in his death and resurrection? Do you have to die to experience heaven? Do you have to die to experience heaven? How does God, this is, how does God see you? Do you? How do you see yourself? Are you perfect? Are you holy? Are you righteous? Are you anointed? Are you sanctified? Does, does God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit live in you now? Who's your teacher? That's kind of like, who taught you this? Who again is your teacher? And the teacher needs to be the Holy Spirit, the truth speaking to you. What is the good news? What did Jesus mean when he said, finished, it's finished? Uh, where do you live? Uh, what is your citizenship? So uh, just a couple of questions here too. Uh, why do people perish? And the scriptures talk about my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And then another, what is the glorious announcement? We're going to be uh, looking at what is the glorious announcement? And then another question, what are the all things? Because that's going to be kind of a theme today, all things. What are some of the all things that, that we're, we're dealing with? So to put the, the proverbial fraud fire extinguisher, uh, we're going to put the fraud fire, fire extinguisher on decay and death, perishable, perishable things. And we're going to be looking at all things new. All things are made new. Boy, and that, that's so powerful. All things have been made new. So when, when does that happen? When did it happen? And in Revelation 21, verse 4 and 5 in the Mirror Translation, and the one seated upon the throne said, behold, behold, I make all things new. He says, I make all things new. And he instructed me to write down uh, these things because these words are true and may be relied on. So th this has come to us. So, you know, and again, many times people look at the book of Revelation as something into the future that's going to happen. This book was written uh, in, in around uh, 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 70, 80, 80, you know, right, right with, with the fall of, of Jerusalem, 70 AD, right before it. And so, uh, and again, it was written to the people then uh, for them th at that point in time. And, and it's for us now to see what they were going through in the revelation. So the revelation, the unveiling, there's going to be some unveiling of things coming to you today that, that I think are really going to be important to you. Uh, so, as we like to do, we, we like to go through a schematic here. And this, this is really uh, an important verse that ties into everything that we do in the beginning. And this, this is in John 1, verses 1 through 4, and this is the Amplified Classic Translation. In the beginning, look at this. 
before all time was the word and the word is Christ. And the word was with God and the word was God himself. He was present originally with God. Okay, here, here's an all thing. Here's an all things. All things were made and came into existence through him. Without him was not even one thing made that comes into being. In him, in him, in, in Christ, Christ in, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And I, I added verse four also in the mirror translation, just, just to give a little, little touch of this too. So in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And in the mirror it says, his life, his life is the light, I like this, that defines our lives. His life, Jesus' life, Jesus Christ's life is the light that defines our lives. And the light shines on where? In the darkness. For the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out, or absorbed it, or appropriated it, and is unreceptive to it. Light overcomes darkness. Life overcomes death. And so, as we like to do in this, uh, we like to show this schematic. And in, in, in what we have here is the green line. And this green line represents uh, represents. Uh, before time, this this is this is the timeline outside of time. God is outside of time, meaning we we were designed to live forever. That's our time. Timeless. God is outside of time. He's timeless. Eternity, uh, continued existence. This is the design. And and what we have is that the first and greatest historical event was creation, because we. Ask the question, what are the three greatest historical events? And so again, in the beginning was actually before creation. He knew us before we were created. In our mother's room, he knew us before the foundation of the world too. So we were a part of Christ before the foundation of the world. And, and, and we're designed for this green line for eternity outside of time. And so many times we make, we uh, the mistakes that I make is when I start working on time and, and, and put the time pressures on. So creation, God spoke into creation. He spoke, let there be light. And, and then, uh, and that was created Adam and Eve. And, and, and the instructions in the Garden of Eden uh, is everything's abundant, everything's available to you. Go, go have dominion and create and expand uh, the, the earth and the cosmos. And, and he said, just wonder what, if you eat from the tree in the, in the middle of the, of the garden there, uh, uh, if you eat from that, that, that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. So, so Adam and Eve, they... They ate from that tree, and that's when we call this the red line living. That's when death, sickness, and disease came in, and then the symptoms uh, that we see in the world today, because that was not God's plan for mankind. God's plan for mankind was life, uh, immortality, to live forever. But the fall came in. The fall came in. So that's the second greatest uh, historical event, and that's when death, sickness, and disease, and again, these symptoms, guilt, shame, pain, condemnation, inferiority, complex, orphan spirit, rejection, injustice, and fear, and, and represented by the kingdom of darkness, and darkness represents mankind's ignorance. I love this definition. Darkness represents mankind's ignorance of the redeemed identity and innocence. That's what darkness, we don't, we don't know uh, what we don't, you know, what we don't, we, we're not, we're not growing. We're not accepting really who we are in Christ and what he did for us. And so the third uh, greatest historical event uh, also is, is redemption. So Jesus, so, so we got the creation, we got the fall, and we have redemption. And God in Christ was reconciled to the world through Jesus Christ through the crucifixion. And with that, we have the fullness of time came in and the kingdom of God has been established here on earth. Heaven came to earth now to live inside a man. So unless a, a person is born from above, born again, it's not possible to see what I'm pointing to, uh, to God's kingdom. This is, uh, that, that's Jesus saying this. So uh, because God is... Uh, is is invisible. He created the visible, and 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 in that 
divisible is alive today because the invisible is living inside of man. And that's why Christ came, is redeem what was lost through Adam and restore mankind's innocence and to bring life and immortality to man. And judgment happened, but judgment, we're judged innocent. God said innocent, not guilty, and restored mankind uh, to their proper stage uh, and, and what God had appropriated for mankind. So here, here's uh, Ephesians 1, verse 9 and 10. This is in the mirror translation. Again, you'll see we use many, many different translations as we go through this, because again, how did you learn the things you've learned? Who taught you these things? We, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And we want you to be hearing that voice here. And this, this is neat, because sometimes the modern translations have, uh, have some really words that, that speak to us. The secret is out. His cherished love dream now unfolds in front of our very eyes. Now look at this. The economy of the fullness of time, everything culminates in Christ. All that is in heaven and all that is on earth is reconciled to him. Jesus is the consummation of, all, of the ages. That's that green line. Jesus is the consummate. He's the fullness of time being outside there. And he's, and he's recon reconciled us to, through his love to him. And this is important that we just grab. That's a scripture here that we can just feed on and eat on and just meditate on. And again, that's one of the things I think is important here uh, is, is you take these scriptures, go back and forth and listen to these teachings over and over. Because like, like Carrie said, it, we're reading scripture. And, and this, this is one of the key scriptures that, that we have had in the podcast over the years because it seems to tie the whole gospel together and it ties who we are. And as we do the teaching today on all things, it really, it really has an important part uh, in this teaching. So, and this, this is Colossians 3 verses 1 through 4. Christ's resurrection is my resurrection. Carry your resurrection. Those watch. Christ's resurrection is our, your resurrection too. Boy, that's just a mouthful right there to just meditate. Christ's resurrection is, is your, our resurrection. This is why we yearn for all that is from above. Because that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. And he's passed that power, honor, and authority onto us to be disciples to this world. And we're sitting with him too. We are, we're co-seated with him. So Christ sits in throne in the place of power, honor, and authority. So, so yes, carry those listening. Feast on all the treasures. And again, we, we kind of think of treasures as, as uh, money, but the treasures are all the gifts that God wants to give us, his love, his abounding love, and, and all the benefit packages he has we've talked about in, in other teachings. So yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm, and fill your thoughts, our thoughts with heavenly realities. And I like this, and not with the distractions of the natural realm. See, and the distractions of the natural realm can be some of our, our habits, our addictions, uh, uh, the news of the day. Where, where are you learning this from? And again, here today, listening to this, we're learning and listening, uh, hopefully to the Holy Spirit, the truth that's speaking to you. Uh, is learning about the heavenly realities and the revelation of who God is. And so, so we have Christ's resurrection is our resurrection. Now we have verse three here. Your cruci my crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life and I have a new life. And now our, your, our true life is hidden away in God, in Christ. So we've been crucified with Christ. So I've already died. So have we died? We died with Christ. We rose with him. We, we ascended with him. We're sitting with him. This is an important verse here because this, this brings in the now, which, ha which happened 2,000 years ago. As Christ himself is seen for who he really is, carry, Glenn, those listening and watch, who you really are will also be revealed. As Christ is seen, as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, who you really are will also be revealed. And he tells us now who we are. For we, you, I, we are one now with him in his glory. And as Carrie, you said, this is not the sweet by and by. 
that, that we are now one with him in his glory. So, so this is that revelation. That's the, the spirit speaking to your spirit that says, oh, I get this. We're, we're, he's in us, we're in him. And again, we're, 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 uh, re we're resurrected with Christ. We're crucified with him. And, and again, heaven has come to earth. Because Jesus, one of the main things he taught on was the kingdom of God is amongst us. And that was 2,000 years ago. That, and we have to get that on that green light. Because when we're outside of time, uh, we can start thinking back 2,000 years and understand, oh, that happened then. We can think in the future. And in that, we're on that green light to think the way God thinks and how God thinks about us. So, and we talked about earlier was, was uh, in, in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, is we are, you are the light of the world. Uh, and this is this is so important, is that you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And again, that's so important because, because we have this light that shines through us, the radiance of the energy of Christ living in. His love radiates. His love radiates through us and actually bring, brings healing uh, to our soul and to our body. Because as we know how much he loves us. Oh, it has such an impact. If we think that God doesn't love us, that, that he's judged us because, because of what we, something we did, no, that's wrong. He's taken all judgment already on the cross. So verse, verse 15, nor, okay, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden, nor do, the, do you light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all, to all that are in the house. It benefits all that are around you, because what you're doing is you're speaking love, you're speaking life, you're speaking the hope that we have now in Christ Jesus based on what he did. So, so here we go. Let, carry, let your life, let my life so shine before people, before men, that they see your good works and glorify your Father in them. That's not the good deeds necessarily, but the way we go about living life. When an obstacle or an adversity comes at us, that doesn't change our identity. Uh, doesn't change who we are based upon the circumstance. We are in Christ. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. And it's important that we understand. So we, God gets the glory. That light is shining on us no matter what the circumstance is. So what we see here... Uh, and this is this is in Ephesians 5, verses 8 to 9 in the Passion Translation. And, and once your life was full of sin's darkness, that's once in life. Once in life it was a, but now, this is a but now now, you have the very light of the Lord shining through you, in you, through you, because of your union with him. We were crucified with him. We were resurrected with him. So with our union with him, your mission is to live as children flooded and overflowing with this revelation light. We can't get this with just logical thinking. This is the wisdom and the revelation of the Holy Spirit revealing the light that we are the light. And then verse 9, supernatural fruits of his life will be seen in you. That's goodness righteousness and truth that and that's loving somebody that doesn't love us that's somebody that's being mean to us it's the, the love of god he is love uh and and yet while we were still sinners christ died for us yet while we're in rebellion he was still loving he loves us not based upon anything that we did it's based upon what he did and showing his love for all mankind and this is another scripture that is really important because this ties into uh, where we're going today on all things. And this is Romans 8, 37. And yet in the midst of all these things, all the things that are going on, uh, not only in your life, your family's life, uh, your business life, uh, in, in, in all around the world, yet in the midst of all these things, look at this. We triumph over them all. We, you and I, carry. We triumph over, for God has made, carry you, me, those listen, has made us to be more than conquerors. He defeated the sin, sickness, and death. Uh, and he's washed us clean. God made us to be more than conquerors. And he did this. He demonstrated it to us in his love. His demonstrated love is the proof uh, his demonstration is our glorious victory over just a little, 
over everything. His demonstrated love on the cross and the resurrection is our glorious victory over everything. So our resurrection, his, Christ's resurrection is our resurrection too. So we rose with him. We have that same victory. We're going to see some scriptures that, that help us with this. So here, here's the great announcement. The great announcement is, and this is Revelation 21, verse 3. And again, in the mirror translation. And a glorious announcement, a glorious announcement that, now pay, pay attention to this, was heralded, heralded out of the throne. Behold, God's tabernacle is where? Is with humanity. He's tabernacling. He's inside of us. He has taken up, look at this, permanent, permanent residence in human skin to be with them in the closest possible association of oneness. They are his own possession, his tribe, and he is their God and separately entwined with them. I, I love it. This is a glorious announcement. The trumpets are blowing. 2,000 years ago, he tabernacled. He did this. But we may just now be discovering these treasures, these hidden treasures of this oneness we have with God, the creator. Now, this is verse four. And this is so neat because... Uh, this just opens up and hopefully will change some thinking that some people have had. Uh, this is verse four. He wipes every tear from their eyes. Now, let me, let me go back to the other verse. This is the glorious announcement. You know, he's tabernacling in humanity. And then here we go with verse four. He wipes every tear from their eyes. And look at this. And blots out every hurtful memory. Those hurtful memories are covered. They're, you know, they're removed. He blots them out. Those stains are gone. And again, those stains many times can call, cause emotional scars that also then scar uh, uh, of, of unforgiveness, uh, of some hurt that you might have. And that emotional scar carries on into the body, into sickness and disease. And we recognize that he loves, he blots out all those hurtful memories. And look at this and death shall be no more, nor any association with it. We speak, and I'm saying as a society, we speak death more than we do life. Is it, and, and, and we have this anticipation about death. And again, uh, this scripture is many times read at funerals, and death shall be no more. And again, that's true for spiritual death, and that's true for those people that have died uh, and gone into the cloud of witnesses. But if we really read what this is really meaning here is death shall be no more, no any associate with it because, because God's purposes for mankind was to manifest and have dominion over this earth and expand, uh, the, you know, bring heaven to earth now. And we need man to live in that, that skin suit that we talked about earlier uh, is to take residency in this human skin. And so there's no more mourning and bitter weeping, nor any reference, look at it, any reference to pain, for the former things have passed away. Now again, this may be hard, this may be hard, but meditate on this and think on this thing. And the one seated upon the throne said, look at this, behold, behold, I make, just a, a few things new, I make all things new. So when does that happen? When did that happen? Has it happened already? And these are questions you need to really ask. All I make all things new. What are the things that he's making new? Can he can he bring you a new body part? Can he can he uh, take a colon and 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 get rid of cancer? Can he uh, uh, someone that may have breast cancer? Can he make that breast new and all the cells inside of there new? Can he renew your mind? Can he? Can he uh, uh, help uh, with, with blood pressure and diabetes? He makes all things new. The cellular system, the blood system, we have the DNA of Christ in us. And he instructed me, and this is John writing this, and he instructed me to write because these words are true and to be relied upon. Oh, this, this is a powerful scripture. And, and, and it's important that we grasp uh, what's being said here. Now, let's speak this actually over our own lives. Now, now this is a, a, a Revelation 21, verse 3 and 4 in the Passion Translation. And again, 
uh, if you're at home uh, and you can you can look at this and, and, and read this as I go along, but I'm going to personalize this. And this is why I think it's so important to take scripture and put your name in there. Uh, and God, look, God's tabernacle is with Glenn. And from now on, he will tabernacle with Glenn as his God. Now, God himself will have his home with them, Glenn. God with Glenn will be his God. He will wipe away every tear from Glenn's eyes and eliminate death out entirely from Glenn's life. Glenn will not mourn or weep any longer. The pain of wounds for Glenn will no longer exist. And the old order for Glenn has ceased. And I just really suggest you take scripture much like this here and you begin speaking that because as you speak it, it's speaking into, into, into the earth, heaven to earth, speaking God's word into your own life, into earth, and it begins changing life. We speak death so much. We speak, oh, when I die, uh, and, and, and uh, it, 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 in the sweet bye-bye, it'll be a better, better thing. God wants to, ta he, he tabernacles with us today. And then in, in Philippians 3, 20 through 21, we'll talk about all things again here too, all things in him. And again, we've talked about citizenship before. Our citizenship is referenced how? And our joint position with Christ in heavenly places. This is now. Heaven is not our goals, because that's sometimes what we say, oh, when I get to heaven. Well, heaven, heaven is not there. It's our starting point, because it came to us 2,000 years ago to bring the kingdom of God, heaven to earth, to live inside of man. Our, ends, our understanding is sourced in a Savior. We fully embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, the salvation that Jesus is the author of refashions these bodies of play and then elevates us to fully participate in the same pattern of his, of his heavenly glory. And this is now this, this severe contradiction that we often, that we might often face in the frailty of the flesh is by far, by far. So we have the frailty of the flesh, the contradiction of really who we're supposed to be, uh, the frailty of the flesh, uh, uh, by far, far surpasses the glorious splendor displayed in the human body. Our, our, our glorious splendor displayed in our human body raised from the dead is so much greater than, than this mindset that we have of the frailty flesh. Uh, flesh. According to the working of God's dynamic part, he imprints, look at this, he imprints the mere pattern of his likeness where? In us. That was before the foundation of the world. He imprints the mirror pattern of his likeness in us. Thus, he subdues all things to himself, bringing all things to him. So heaven is the starting point because he came to bring heaven, the kingdom of God, the triune God to live inside of us now. And again, it's okay if we're just getting this now, 2,000 years ago, because, because that awakens Every part of us, the spirit comes in because God is spirit and, and the Holy Spirit comes in and he's the one revealing these truths to you. And then what we see in Philippians 4 verse 13 is, you know, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's one of the verse, versions we have. And here, this is in the Amplified Classic. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. So Christ powers me. Uh, and I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength, inner strength in me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And, Jesus, and, and, and this is in Matthew 19, 26, another all things is that, G, and again, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. And part of the question was, had to do with salvation, uh, man trying to save themselves. Following the law and the rules. With man, this is impossible. How do I enter into the kingdom of God? With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. He redeems us. He, he restored us. He recreated. He regenerated us. And he has forgiven us. We understand our identity is so important and understand uh, who we are. So, and, and then we see in Hebrews 2, verse 10, is that he towers in conspicuous prominence far above all things. He is both their author and their conclusion. So here goes. 
And this is important. All things, this goes back in, when you talked about in, in John 1, all things exist in him and through him. He now triumphantly leads everyone. This is everyone, just you know, everyone, as sons to glory through a perfect salvation. The extent of the suffering he bore is the measure of the perfection of the salvation over which he presides. So all things, he exists, all things exist and are held together uh, because of him. And in, 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 in Colossians 1 verses 12 through 18, uh, this, is, this is really neat. All things to himself is that giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion, which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people. That's us in the light. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control of the dominion of darkness. So that dominion of darkness doesn't have any control anymore and has transferred us where? Into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. And see, and we can have a mindset, a flawed mindset, thinking he, he didn't forgive all my sins, you know, that, but when he said he's finished on the cross, he finished it. He took all, he took all sin, all guilt, shame, condemnation on the cross, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. Now, he is the exact likeness, likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. So Jesus Christ is the, the exact likeness of the unseen God in the visible representation of him. He is the firstborn of all creation that was from the beginning. For it was in him that all things were created in heaven and on earth. That's now. Things, when we say now, meaning that's what we get to get to have now. Things seen and things unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, and authorities, all, all, all things were created and exist through him by his service, intervention, and in and for him. And here it goes. And he himself existed before all things, and in him all things consist, cohere, and are held together. So everything's held together in him. He also is the head of his body, the church, seeing he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he alone in everything, in every respect, might occupy the chief place, stand first, and be preeminent. Now, let's look at a couple other verses that go in this. And this is the in the Passion Translation. This is verse uh, uh, verse 19 and 20 here. For God is satisfied... God is satisfied to have to have all his fullness dwelling in Christ. And by the blood of his cross, everything in heaven and earth is brought back to himself. What was lost in Adam has been brought back, back to its original intent, restored to innocent, uh, innocence again. So what was that? Just a little things? It was all things. So it's grasping this that we have dominion because we... He's all authority has been given to him. He's given that authority to us over this earth. And the earth is crying out for the manifestation of sons to rule the earth. And that's not ruling it with, with an iron class. It's with his love, his forgiveness, his mercy, and 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 and, and growing and re, recreating things and creating things that God has, has given us to, uh, to perform. So, and, and in Hebrews 1, verse, uh, verse 3, in the Mirror Translation, the Messiah message is what has been on the tip of the Father's tongue all along. Now, he's the crescendo of God's conversation with us and gives context and content to the authentic prophetic thought. So, the prophetic thought has been there is the Messiah message. They've been teaching. So, they've been teaching. Everything that God has in mind for mankind is voiced in him. Jesus is God's language. He's the radiant and flawless mirror expression of the person of God. He makes the glorious intent of God's visible and exhibits the character of every attribute of Elohim, human form. His being announces our redeemed innocence. So as he is, so we in this world. His being announces our redeemed innocence. Having accomplished purification of sins, 
He sat down enthroned in the boundless measure of his majesty in the right hand of God and his executive authority. He is the force of the universe upholding what? Everything that exists. This conversation is that dy dynamic that sustains the entire cosmos. And again, I know I'm going through these, but boy, go back, listen to these, look these verses up so you can understand. Because again, it, it seems like the continuation of all the teachings is about our identity of knowing how much God loves us and who we are, that he is our father and, and, and we have been fully redeemed uh, to rule and reign here on earth. So, and, and again, this is a prayer that we pray with, with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come now will be done on earth as it is. And so heaven and earth are joined together. We've kind of had a mindset that they're separated, but the kingdom of God is at, in your midst here. That's the, the Holy Spirit, the triune God is living inside of us. And, and then and in, in Psalms 8, verse 6, is that you have made him to have dominion over, over the works of your hands. You have put, what, all things again under his feet. And again, and that's so heaven and earth, and he's given us dominion on earth here uh, to rule and reign, to, to recreate, regenerate, uh, and, and, and have dominion. And, and then... Uh, uh, and, and in verse 15 here, in the image, in the image, that we, in the, the, in him, the image and likeness of God is made visible in human form and order that everyone may recognize, may recognize their true origin in him. He is the firstborn of every creature. And then some of the footnotes that's in the mirror translation, uh, what darkness veiled from us, he unveiled in him. We clearly see the mirror reflection of my, our original life. The son of his love gives accurate evidence of his image in human form. The incarnation, the incarnation means that God can never again be invisible. Because what does that say? That's saying that his incarnation is that we're incarnate with the Holy Spirit, the spirit, soul, and body. And so his invisible uh, Godhead is living into the visible uh, body, uh, the skin suit that we talked about before. Everything that is, everything that is begins where? In him, whether in the heavenly realm or in the earth realm, visible or invisible. He is the original blueprint, his original blueprint of every... Uh, original uh, blueprint of every order of justice and every level of authority being the kingdoms, the governments, the principalities, uh, our jurisdictions, the original form of all things were founded by him and created in him. Any order that does not mirror Christ, does not mirror Christ, is a distortion of man's own making. So where did you learn this from? Uh, and this is Colossians 1, verses 15 through 16. So any disorder, uh, any order that does not mirror Christ, and again, we look in the mirror, what do we see? We see Christ. We're, we're that mirror image of, of Christ in us, the hope of glory. So, and we, we know this scripture, but I think it's important that we get this again. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives where? Within you whom you have received as a gift from God. You're not your own. You're bought with a price purchased with the preciousness and paid for, made his own. So then, so then, honor God and bring glory to him in your body. So our body is that temple that houses the sanctuary and the tabernacle of the spirit of God, this, uh, the triune spirit, soul, and, God, uh, and, and body together. Uh, this is why he came, so we can rule and reign here on earth as kings. And what we read, I just really like this scripture here because it's one that I just speak, uh, several of these I speak over my, my life every, every day. But this is Romans 8, verse 11. And, and again, you know, just say this word, the same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit. 
Uh, and, and again, at the top here of the slide, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives where? It lives carrying you and me. It lives in you and gives life and immortality to your body now. In, in the verses, verse 11 here of Romans 8, our union, our union, my union with Christ further reveals that because the same spirit, the same spirit who awakened the body of Jesus from the dead, re resurrected, resurrected the body from the dead, inhabits who? Inhabits us, inhabits me, inhabits you, Gary. We eagerly participate in his resurrection. Now, get you, grasp, grasp that. That, that. That's a big idea here. Our union with Christ further reveals that because the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, basically, inhabits us, we equally participate in his resurrection. In this act of authority whereby God raised Jesus from the dead, he co-restores what? Your body, your body to life by his indwelling spirit. Pretty clear here. So he co-restores our body back to the original immortality that we're designed for. And again, We've been speaking death more than we have restoration of all things, of the indwelling spirit that is living inside of us. And this is a prayer that, that we've been praying as we, as we uh, and this is a prayer that, that Jesus prayed uh, to the disciples. And you'll see here, he's praying it to each one of us today. And, and this is in John 17, verses 20 through 23 in the Passion Translation. And I ask not only for these disciples that are standing here, but also all those who will one day believe in me through who? Their message. So he's speaking to the disciples that are there before him, but then also they're the ones carrying the good news of the gospel of the resurrected Christ living inside of us so that they believe through their message. And here's Jesus speaking this. And I, Jesus, Jesus is saying, I pray for them, the disciples and you and I, I pray for them to be one, to be joined together, to be joined together as one, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. So he he wants us to be joined together with the Father and the Son together, joined together. I pray for them to become one with us, one with us, so that the world will recognize that you sent me. That's the reconciliation. That's the redemption message. We'll recognize that we have been redeemed because the love of God is flowing in and through us. For the very glory you've given to me, I've given to them. That's not a future glory. It's a glory that he gave us 2,000 years ago that's being revealed to us now. For the very glory you've given to me, to Jesus, I have given to us. We're receiving so that, so that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. Oh, that same spirit. You live fully in me and now I live fully in them so that they will experience perfect unity and the world will be convinced that you have sent me for they will see that <laughs> this is good. They'll see that you love each one of them. You'll see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love that you have for me. So that's Jesus speaking. And he's saying, the same love that you have for me, Jesus, is the same love that you have for each one of them. It's not based upon uh, what you do. It's based upon his love, his redeeming love for us. And this is something that, that I think it's really important that we confess. And I was thinking about this this morning about how so many times we, oh, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm you know, I, you know we, we, we confess it. Raise your hand if you're sinning, you want to be forgiven. This is what we want to confess. This is the confession because this is what Jesus did. Let's confess Christ is in me. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. The anointed one lives in me. And I am in Christ. And we are one. And I am his beloved. Those are words that speak life versus I'm a sinner. I, 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 you know, I've, I've done all these things wrong. No, speak. I've been redeemed. Christ is in me. I am in Christ. We are one. And I am his beloved. These are words that we're going to speak over our lives on a daily basis. 
Christ in me. I am in Christ. We are one, and I am his beloved. Amen and amen. You know, Glenn, the, the, th the thought that just keeps coming up as you're going through this teaching, uh, I love it when you explained about uh, where you're reading biblically about how uh, God's tabernacle is now with us. And also um, the very fact that as we were talking about, we really are not waiting for anything more. I think that's one of the, you know, they always talk about the good news of the gospel, but really the great news is, is the last words that Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. And so for us to really achieve our identity the way God sees us, and I think uh, Glenn, that's that's why God gave you that book, Fraud, What God Has to Say About the Tactics of the Enemy, is because as long as the enemy can keep you deluded yeah. as to your real purpose and your real position, um, then he wins. But when you start to appropriate all these kingdom living con concepts and understand that Christ died so that he is available to you now, that's the real point. And Glenn, that's why we've talked about so many times you put all the IMs in the back of the fraud book. You put, uh, we always close each broadcast out with the believer's de declaration of legal rights. And, and part of this, as you mentioned, is rehearsing to yourself. Um, I like it when you take the scripture and then you are putting it, you're making it very first person because that's how God intended it to be. And Glenn, when you adopt that perspective the kingdom yes. living perspective you really are just it first of all life lightens up i don't know a different way to say it other than that and it's so fun to walk through uh, all the good things that god then is doing it's just a great way to be yeah so who taught this to you it's got to be the holy spirit right we didn't learn this from man Right. who's teaching this to you and that that causes that light to go and go oh there's the truth i get it finally and what i was taught over here may not have been the truth is there something else here and boy it is just so neat because because again there's so many uh fraud frauds uh that we believe uh, and again our the biggest fraud was our identity was stolen and, and, and in that, the, the 40 chapters, little bite-sized chapters here, help identify uh, some of those frauds. Uh, and it's just so important we understand, oh, who we are in Christ. And what Christ did uh, to bring us into the family. We're in the family before the foundation of the world. And Carrie, that's so good what you're saying. So good. Yeah, no, it really is. And that's why, especially if you're new to the... Uh to the Kingdom Living podcast and all that uh, Glenn Reppel has been uh, publishing throughout the years, been doing the uh, Reppel Minute continuously since 2006. And it's just a daily, simple, quick uh, couple of minutes of biblical motivation and inspiration that reminds us of Kingdom Living. So as we uh, embark on our day's adventure, we can kind of be properly rooted and grounded and understanding what our, where we are positionally. And so that's available for you free. If you go to the repleminute.com, you can uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel. It comes in every morning, look at Facebook, or even if you go to our website, the repleminute.com, you'll be able to just put in an email and it can be dropped in your uh, email box every morning if you so choose. And, and then on top of that, Glenn, I want to remind everybody uh, that we, this is episode 146, and and we cover <laughs> all things in in this in this uh, podcast series, and there really is so much foundational teaching. You know, like we said at the outset of the program, it's not an opinion show. We're literally uh, just exploring God's word in the Bible, and I think I think all those uh, are available to you uh, on the website, on the YouTube channel, etc. And then on top of that, there's information about how you could get a copy of that book, Glenn, uh, Fraud, What God Has to Say About the Tactics of the Enemy. There's so many good tools. Um, we even talk about the Be Believer's Declaration of Legal Rights. And 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 uh, that is, uh, as we close the broadcast out, Glenn is going to read that. But I also want to remind you, you can just click on the link and go ahead and get your own free copy of the Be Believer's Declaration of Legal Rights. We talk about uh, printing it out, maybe putting it someplace that you're going to see it and run into it on a daily basis. And and remind and rehearse 
uh, if you will, the good news that, or the great news actually, of, of what kingdom living is all about. So Glenn, kind of with that, I wanted to ask you to, uh, uh, to share the Believer's Declaration of Legal Rights and then uh, pray for everyone within the sound of our voices. Exactly. And again, as, as I read these, I'm speaking them also, and that's why it's so important that we confess Christ is in me, I am in Christ, we are one, I am his beloved. And what we have here are these believers' declarations. These are the declarations of who we are, uh, is I am a special race as a child of God, as a citizen in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, and a kingdom of priests. I belong to the family of God. I can enter, I can enter into God's presence boldly now. I have been recreated into God's image and likeness of love. We love beings. I manifest and experience heaven on earth now with righteousness, peace, and joy. I'm restored, redeemed, and recreated back with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit living in me now. I have the word of God dwelling in me. I have the crown of righteousness on my head and wear the garment of praise, which is my robe of righteousness. I have the legal rights and privileges to use the name of Jesus. I have legal authority as a believer over the principalities, powers, and rulers of the kingdom of darkness. They've been defeated. I have that authority. I have, through the Holy Spirit living in me, the resurrected power to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick, and they are healed. And it's so important that we know, and as I just read this now, I'm thinking, well, there might be some people that say, I'm not righteous. You've been made righteous. Uh, Christ made you. He, took, he who knew no sin became sin. He took all of the darkness and, and, and took, and you took his righteous in you. So you've been made righteous. You can wear that robe of righteousness. And that's so important that we think that way because we think we're not, oh my gosh, you're going to get what that gets. So we want to speak these words over us also. So Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus that that, that God in Christ was reconciling the world. The blood of Jesus was shed so that we could have life now, have it more abundantly. Father, we thank you for your word because it does not return void. It's penetrating people's hearts now. It's bringing healing and life to the cells and to the nervous system, to the blood, and totally restoring parts of their lives that they thought was dead. We speak to those dead bones. We breathe life into those bones and they come alive now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your healing. You are the healer. You're the great physician that brings healing of relationships, of restoration uh, and, and, and reconciliation. You've reconciled all mankind to you in Christ Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for all you're doing around the world and bringing your sons and daughters into relationship, into the family. Father, thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you again, Glenn, for another great teaching, all things. And, you know, I just can't help but remember all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to the purpose. And if you're watching this uh this broadcast, that's you. It's, it's it, God is no respecter of persons. He's the same for all of us. And so, Glenn, thank you for another teaching. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of the Kingdom Living Podcast. See you soon. God bless you.